Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I have a tutorial on making an art journal page. It is going to cover collage, layout, embellishing, mark making, adding layers, and texture. It will start with, I'm going to do the whole thing, soup to nuts, start with a blank page, add layers, until we get here. Let's go. Now, I say blank page, but what I really mean is I'm going to start it on this this patchwork of print and text, which is what I use underneath all of my art journal pages because it will peek through and add layer and texture and interest. I've already chosen the images that I'm going to use. They are from my scrap box. And my scrap box is really uh, just, just fun stuff from um, thrift store books and greeting cards, calendars, things that anybody can find. If you would like to see a video on how to make your own library of scrap images that, uh, that are easy to find and cheap, um, I have a video that shows you that. The link is in the text below this. The first part of this video is just going to be talking about the collage element, how and why these things are going to work together. The second part of the video will be about working with the layout and embellishing, making the page really pop. So if that's what you came here for, skip ahead. It took me a long time, I'm serious, about two hours just to come up, just to choose these images. Um, it will take me another long time to get them situated. My point is, it takes time. So don't worry if you need to take hours or days or a week to get situated with your images. That's the way it's supposed to work. You're doing it right. I've had her for eight or 10 years and today is her day. I know I wanted her to anchor this side of the canvas because just this, this line here, just, that makes sense. That's the only easy part. I have this wild, oversized, very orange rose. And I'm thinking really seriously about putting it here. I mean, obviously I'll have to trim it, but I like the way that she's gazing into it as we do with beautiful roses. And she's also, she could be nurturing it or she could be about to let it go and release it. I don't know. I actually thought about using it over here. That's, that's pretty crazy, but I like it. It's really bold and big. And since I was thinking about using this Kingfisher, I thought, you know, I could actually put him here and it would look almost as if he was emerging from this sort of spaceship looking flower. And, uh, and he's flying towards her. I like this because you've got the orange in the marigold color here and in his uh, breast and eye thingy and also in her gown. But that's a lot of look and I'm not going to be doing that. So I'm going to put that back over here. But I did think about it. So we're just going to kind of park that here. Look over here. Now, I am very seriously thinking about using this. Is he a pelican? Um, I like it. it the palette suits very well him and her. There's a lot of similarity there. And I really like the way his gaze is going back towards her. So that is a strong possibility, except I feel like it needs something over here. And uh, if I do use this, I will want to embellish and bring that color over to that side. Let's see. Uh, oh, I'm also really thinking seriously about her. I think this may be Judith and Hofernes because there is a head in her basket of that she has just cut off. But I can't remember. I'm not sure. Oh, see, that's that just is from a free brochure somewhere. Okay. So um, I really like the way that she is also looking back and seems to be saying, what? 
what the what? Because that's a lot of flour and mystery. I also may, let's see, then I could add this guy over here. Hmm, I don't know. I might add these ladies. Uh, let's see, they're just some 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 nuns or or ladies, holy ladies, and um, I like the fact that they're looking at her, and she's looking at her. So I'm kind of thinking about that, but I'm not sure. Oh, let's see. I definitely wanted to, I had a little bit of a mishap with this butterfly. So I've got to do something resourceful because he's got his wing cut off. So I'm going to just add him there to give her a little bit of a hint of her own kind of wings or halos. Okay. So I'm thinking about that. I could actually make him fit, but the thing is, it's going from whimsical, which I really like, to surreal, which is not my thing. So I want to cut this narrative down a little bit and make it just a little, little less. I'm going to pick my final thing and come back and talk about it. Actually, before I start gluing things down, I want to talk to you a little bit about placement. And this is a great, great uh, way to do it. I might go with this. And if I do, I want you to see that by putting him at this point in the page, this bird could be approaching this rose as a hummingbird might. Or he might be going through the flower to come to her hands. But look what happens when I just do that very, very subtle move and change his uh, direction. Now he could be going up and out and no rose is going to stop him. Uh-uh. He's going up and out. If I change his direction once more, just a few degrees, for some reason it becomes menacing, kind of. And uh, if she wasn't here, you could see the difference between this and this. So my point is, be sure and just play around. Even just a few degrees on a page can change your whole narrative. This is the layout I've decided on. And um, it needed a little bit up here because this side is very heavy and it's pulling the eye. And uh, I was looking for something, maybe a butterfly, a bird's egg to fill this space. And I found these little, these little guys, these little angels. And, and that's because I'm actually working right now in a mini journal. And so I've got a ton of teensy tiny little images on my table pushed right out of the way there. I'm going to put them there. It does a couple of things. As I said, it gives balance, the blue in their gowns picks up the blue in the bird and that picks up the blue in these wings here. It's subtle, but it does draw the eye across. Now, usually I add my stencil work as embellishment at the end after the whole thing's uh, done and dusted, but I want to try a new technique and I just invented it in my brain. So I don't know if it's going to work, but that is okay because this is my art journal. And that's the whole point of an art journal. I don't try new things in my altered books that I haven't uh, road tested. That's what this is for. So this will either be genius and I will use it all the time or it will be a hot mess. And that's just fine. It's how you learn. Experiment, play, and let's go. I'm going to add some stencil over here. Because if you've seen my videos, you know that I really like the peeling wallpaper, old fresco look. And I get that with gesso. But before I do that, I think I'm going to add some layers to my fresco wallpaper mess. And I'm going to do that by putting down some stenciling underneath all of it. 
I needed to use a medium that would not react with the gesso and the water that I'm going to be adding. So this is acrylic. Once acrylic is dry, it's, it's down. It's not moving. I don't paint a lot, but even I had red and yellow acrylic. I mixed them together and I added a little bit of water so that it wouldn't be quite as viscous, more of a forgiving texture. So I'm going to apply it with a makeup sponge and I'm not going to think about it a whole lot because as I said, we're going to be gluing on top of this, working into it with uh, gesso and other liquids and who knows what, who knows. So I just want to do some irregular Okay, and we'll see when we add our other pieces whether this was great or not. Now we have a layout. And as often happens at this point, I think, dang, this looks really good. But it still looks like a static collage. And that's not what I'm going for in my art journal. So I'm going to start embellishing. The first step is to go around every single border, every edge of every part of the focal point with a water soluble pencil. And water soluble means that you can activate this. When it's activated with water, it starts to become the, the, uh, the pencil starts to act more like an ink or a paint. And you can then start, but I'm, I'm not using water, I'm using gesso. And I like to use gesso because it just makes your page softer. It, you still have that border here around your images, but by pulling it out into the page, the gesso, the gray, you're making it softer, making it blend into the page, become one with the page in a way that's kind of almost painterly. And it definitely makes your piece a lot more mysterious. So here we go, double time. Now we're ready for some embellishing. You can see that the gesso has been pulled into the page all throughout. And I'm not unhappy with how that experiment turned out. It certainly does have that fading fresco look as the gesso pulled over the acrylic stamping. First, I want to try to soften this flower a little bit. As I said, I did use the gesso inside of here. Okay, I'm not happy with that. The chalk's not working. But let's see. This is a gelato, and it's a little bit softer than a chalk pastel, and it goes on. It's also water-soluble, but I like how you can smudge it. And so I'm smudging into the, the gray that came from the gesso and the pencil. And just working it in. Just picking a few leaves here and there. I'm not overthinking it. Bring it out of the flower a little bit. And 
And now it looks, like I said, a lot less shiny and a lot more mysterious. So very happy with how that's turning out. Do the same with this one. And now I'm going to go back with my yellow, brighten that up just a little bit. So this is the yellow chalk pastel over the orange gelato. Next, I want to add some mark making. And to do this, I want to look at our main colors, our palette here. This tea color, the blue, and the orange. And those are the colors that I want to try to pick up and move around the page throughout. I'm going to do some more stencil work with this is a, kind of a burlap pattern. I'm going to just, and I'm just going to put it here and there. First, I'm going to lightly spritz my paper with some water. And then I want to pull this orange over here. But you know what? I really wasn't happy with any of my orange pastels or anything. So I'm going to try to mix a couple together. I mean, I'm a gal with a lot of pastels and none of them were the right orange. And that's, that's, that's pretty close. That's not bad. So you can see that the pastel now is, is, is like a chalk and it's got a slightly raised texture. So it looks really cool. Let's add a little bit more here. You just want to work it in. Otherwise, it's not really going to go through those. Okay, that turned out a little muddy, but it's not that, that's okay because it picks up the tea color. So I don't hate it. Let's see. I think here. You just want a very light spritz to get that pastel to stay in there. Okay, that's that's more like it. Okay, so we've added some mystery and we're pulling that eye across the page like that. Now, I want to do something similar with a little bit more blue. Uh, we've got the blue here, but we don't really have a whole lot of it here. So I'm going to use the same stencil so that thematically the mark making will be similar. But now I'm using a paint dauber, and this is in a blue. You, This is a store-bought one, but you can very much make your own. Okay. It's just a little, little, little mess. Let's see. I'm just doing this to the eye to see where there might be a space that needs filling or to add some balance. I want to pull a little bit more blue down here, so I'm just coloring. This is a uh, chunky graphite stick by Derwent. I also want to add a couple of coffee rings just because I really like them right now and I thought it would be a good chance to show you a new technique. Like I said earlier, I couldn't find the right color for, to make some pigment. 
So let's say you have that problem and you need a blue. This is a water soluble stick and I'm just rubbing like crazy, making up a layer on this. Um, this is some parchment paper and I'm making a little pool here. I'm gonna take my Japanese teacup that I like to use to make mini coffee rings and I can just ink it up like that. Okay. And so if you need some emergency pigment making, that will come to your rescue. I'm pretty happy with that too. And now I'm going to add some drizzles. To do this, I often use um, a mister, but I'm going to show you today. I'm using blue ink in some, a little bit of alcohol. So sort of a faux alcohol uh, ink. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is just drizzle this across the top like that with the mister, the pipette. And now activate that a little bit with some water in this mister. And again, that's really, really, really adding some gorgeous grunge. You don't have to do it in alcohol. It just uh, gives it a kind of a, a different effect. I often do it just with the water. You may want to guide this a little bit. It's not hard to do. You just want to move your page around like that. It does tend to avoid some of the major figures. Like it probably won't go all the way into this one. I don't know why it, it tends to go around just, just, just the seams there. You know what? I think I'm going to add a little bit to this guy under him right there. Add some water to kind of soften that a little bit. I don't want that much blue in my flower. It also has worked around and into the coffee cup stain, making that even cooler. Soften that just a little. And this too. So I'm just making little rivulets and pools. And you know what? I think I'm going to stop there for now. As always, I will probably work on it for another couple of weeks. That's, I don't know, it's a, it, I'm, it's a compulsion. Let's see. I have an online monthly newsletter. It's going to have lots of art tutorials, art journals, journal arts, book arts, uh, free stuff, free scans of vintage papers, and you can subscribe to that. There's a link below this video. Please subscribe to this, um, my channel. If you like this kind of thing, I post every Friday. And if you have a, a question or some feedback, please let me know in the comments. I really appreciate it. And until next Friday, get up and go make something.